Hi everybody, it's uh, the 4th of July, so happy Independence Day to all my American friends. Um, I live in North Carolina, so I, I'm celebrating too. So I'm going to be uh, painting, doing, completing two resin paintings this morning, and I'm using the same products on both wooden panels. These are 12-inch square wooden panels. And one has been completely prepped in white and one has been prepped previously with some navy or deep blue. So the one that you can see me uh, applying paint on first, the one that's closest to the screen, is actually going to use the same palette as a painting that was purchased by Monica in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, she she actually was go. I was going to give her my sample piece because with all paintings, I do a sample piece with the palette to see if the colors work um, and the interactions I have on the canvas. Well, I wasn't really very happy with the sample piece and uh, especially to give it as a gift. So I decided to create Mon Monica her own a new painting to complement the one she already has as a housewarming gift. So the one that you can see closest at the screen, the bottom of the screen, Monica, if you're watching, this is your painting that will be coming to you. So the first colour that I placed down um, was the Golden Fluid Acrylic in Thalo Blue Green Shade. And that uh, was the deep colour blue that I applied to both canvases. And I've come behind and I'm using a black diamond uh, pigment in deep uh, blue sea. And uh, that one is a particular favourite of mine. And I'm putting it next to the golden fluid acrylic paint. Uh, what I want to do is create the same palette on two different colour backgrounds. And the one at the top is uh, a painting I'm kind of doing for my own collection. But... Uh, so this is the deep blue sea and it's a mica powder and um, and I'm putting it close to the fluid acrylic at each end because mica powder has great interaction with other products when it's uh, applied next to it or slightly overlapping. So um, that's a hint if you want to create some really interesting shimmering effects in your painting is... You know, Michael is beautiful, period. It's a beautiful product to have in resin. It's very reflective in clear resin. but and So it can be on the canvas on its own. But if you place it close to another product, such as fluid acrylic, it will give you some really beautiful um, effects. Now, this is a golden fluid acrylic, and it said the color teal. Obviously, the bottle's looking a bit worse for wear. It's been uh, used a lot. And I'm applying that through the middle, which is what I did with the original painting that uh, Monica has hung in her home, is I put the navy kind of deep ocean blue to the corners and then I ran the teal through the middle. Um, and the opposite I'm doing in the painting above, which you can see me applying now, is I've kind of switched it up with the deep color towards the middle and the teal towards the uh, outer corners. And the, the wooden panel that you can see me using in right now came from Dick Blick uh, Art Supplies, which I use a lot for my wooden artist panels. The one above it, the white one, I actually purchased in Hobby Lobby and um, it's their own product. And I wanted to try it out and see how well it um, basically stands up to resin art, which I suspect it's going to be just fine, but it is a panel that I'd previously not used. This that I'm putting down now, and I'm waiting to because I'm going to show the bottle in a second, but I believe it's the Amsterdam ink and it's in turquoise. And, and if you can see, I've overlapped it in places because it's an ink, 
Inks are inclined to have very translucent properties in resin, which makes them incredibly desirable to have in my paintings personally, because it enables me to overlap and create some kind of depth in my piece. And um, so I typically do add some type of ink to my uh, paintings. This is an acrylic ink. I really like acrylic inks because the pigment stands up um, and stays true. And I also like tattoo ink. If you've seen any of my other videos, you will see I use tattoo ink because it has a high pigment quality. And uh, if you're new to my videos, please hit subscribe because I very much enjoy getting feedback and uh, if you subscribe you'll get alerts that um, I've posted new videos. And I always post the finished piece onto my Facebook group which is Resin and Mixed Media Art with Tina Kamala. So please check us out. It's a closed group with thousands of members um, and we share tips. There you go. Amsterdam Acrylic Ink in Turquoise was that one that I just placed. I'm coming behind with a Liquidex ink and it's in muted turquoise. So it's another ink and uh, you will see again translucent properties. And this is a beautiful ink. I really, really like this ink and uh, it's muted turquoise. And depending on how much you put in will give you a richer color. Um, you can definitely shade it to what you want, but it's in its own right. It's a beautiful color comes with a dropper and I placed one and a half droppers into uh, four ounces of resin to yield this color. And this is probably a good time to mention if you're new to resin art. Uh, when you mix your clear resin, which I have done here, resin, the clear resin essentially is my medium. Uh, now, when you, uh, you actually add, be it acrylic paint, ink, mica powder, acrylic ink, alcohol ink, whatever you use, tattoo ink, just understand this rule that resin has to remain 90% of the volume. So the clear resin has to be 90% of the volume. If you were to add more of the products, the resin is likely to become kind of gooey and it will not cure. So the 10% rule. In my experience, and I've been um, painting with resin for quite a few years, you don't need 10%. Um, I find that 5%, 6% is probably where I'm at, maybe even less at times. Now what I'm putting down now is a golden fluid acrylic and it's an interference paint and it's in the blue green and the interference paint, um, they have a color shift property. So I like them in my piece, especially my ocean pieces, because it has um, an added reflective quality in the finished piece, which is quite subtle, but I very much find it very attractive. So, um, I like to add not too much, just a little bit. I like the reflective qualities that um, are in the piece. Now what I'm doing now is I am just lightly t tapping the resin into the corners because I want to make sure that my wooden panel is covered. I do occasionally tilt canvases, such as the technique you use, you'll see in fluid acrylic pouring. But I'm inclined to um, manipulate my designs with my hands. That's just my technique. Um, I, I guess I like a lot, a little bit more control. So what I'm doing right now is I'm lightly tapping where the transitions of the colors and products are. And by lightly tapping the products, and I'm doing the dark first, and then I'm going to um, transition to the light. By lightly tapping... I create a transition and a subtle blend, but I don't fully blend the products because I don't want to end up with a uniform color. 
I want effects. I want the I want the products to kind of come together, but also stay independent of each other. And I find this technique enables me to do that. When I'm tapping, I'm I'm following the design of the piece that I'm trying to create, the flow essentially. So as you know, I haven't torched the piece at all yet. When you um, torch resin, it really activates it as far as the curing process. Not that it wouldn't cure without a torch, because it would. But the moment you torch and you warm up the resin, you will start the curing process, truly. You will speed it up. So I, I'm inclined to leave the torching for as long as possible. So I'm introducing some white here and it's a Rust-Oleum satin white spray paint and um, I'm just lightly kind of with a popsicle stick running it through my piece and again I'm creating, I'm running with the true to the movement that I'm trying to create and the design. So again I'm taking it through the um, the other piece above. And I'm not applying too much white. Um, I just want a hint of sort of the water, the splash, I guess. Um, so I want a little bit of white in my water, um, but I don't necessarily want uh, it to overpower the piece. That's not what I'm going for. Now that white resin was uh, mixed into clear resin. So this is a spray paint, um, Krylon Brilliant Silver. This one I'm not applying in resin. I'm spraying lightly straight on top of the wet resin, as you can see. So by spraying um, lightly spray paint on top of the resin, it will sit on there um, and I'm going to break it apart a little bit with some alcohol as I'm showing you there. 91% alcohol, such as you buy in the pharmacy department. And I'm just going to spray that on top of the canvases. And that will hit that spray paint that's just been applied and break it apart. Now alcohol is flammable and I will be using a torch. So when you see me use alcohol, I usually kind of allow it to evaporate a little bit. Um, I don't come straight behind with a blowtorch. So now I'm using some clear resin and I'm running it along the flow of the piece. Clear resin has a lot of reflective qualities um, and I often will add it to my piece just to help some transitions of products and effects. So it's always wise to keep back um, a little bit of your resin for the final um, design. So I'm going to create my movement this time uh, using my hot air gun, uh, which I purchased in Lowe's, I believe. And I'm just, the air is hitting the resin, it's warm, so it's making the, when you warm resin, the viscosity gets thinner. So I'm able to manipulate it, now it's warming, and the air, I'm, dominating the way I the way I move my hot air gun I'm uh, to to create the right kind of design and flow that I'm looking for so um, it's not a random um, like circular motion I'm I'm purposely pulling the products apart blending but conscious of the flow 
So I'm watching the products and uh, how they're moving, and uh, I'm making sure that that's following the design that I'm uh, going for. And by doing this, you know, I'm breaking up the surface, so that little bit of uh, brilliant silver spray paint that I sprayed on, followed by a little bit of alcohol, is now moving around a little bit too, so it's, it's breaking up. And where there's mica, especially the this type of mica, which has a lot of sparkly, um, sparkling qualities, I'm kind of moving the mica out and then kind of moving the paint back over and the ink back over it so that I can kind of hide it and then make it dominant and then kind of hide it a little bit to give a lot of focus to the piece and give some really beautiful effects. But as I said, a large part of how my design ends up is my technique of using my fingers. And um, I don't, everybody's got a great, there's so many great techniques out there. Tilting canvases definitely gives you great rewards with resin art too. Um, but to a degree, they're more random. And this particular piece is not a random kind of concept. I, I have a concept of how I want it to look. So for these, I am favoring using my hot air gun and my fingers essentially to create the design. And I'm going to show you some close-ups at the end of the uh, video of the wet resin, so it hasn't cured yet. And I'm going to, uh, they will be at the end of the video, but uh, on my Facebook page, my Facebook group, I will be posting some uh, various groups, actually, that I belong to. I will post some final pictures, photographs, uh, when once they're cured, because... I will, once I'm finished, I will cover them over and make sure they cure in a non-dust, sort of a dust-free um, environment. So I'm, I'm now picking up the overspill and I am running it around the sides to, to you know, give the design and the colour to roll over the sides as much as possible. And when I'm doing this, I this is a great time for me because I, as I apply the resin around the sides, I study the piece and, you know, kind of look at it and make me kind of consider whether or not there's any uh, added qualities I want to put in the piece or anything, components that are not working for me. The other thing that it allows me to do is it gives me time to check out the resin because air bubbles are inherent to mixing resin and when you apply them to the canvas a lot of them will just naturally dissipate but some will rise to the surface over time reasonably quickly so they're quite predictable and are quite manageable but when I'm doing the sides of when I'm, I'm kind of smoothing out the sides of my paintings I'm allowing myself some time to study the finished uh, surface and make sure that there's no issues that um, are, you know, that can, because while it's curing to a degree, you can repair it. But once it moves into a gel like state, which it will do within about the next five minutes, you really can't do anything else with it. It's not really manipulatable at that point.
and I will be using my blowtorch on the painting just to roll it over and make sure that I have all the air bubbles. So they're looking very good. I'm, I'm very pleased with them. And please give me some feedback if you're enjoying seeing the, the paintings. So I just sprayed a little bit more of the alcohol onto the uh, painting just to um, further break up any of the surface spray paint. And now I'm hitting it with a blowtorch, making sure that we have that kind of beautiful glass finish. So I continue to blow torch and uh, keep looking at the surface, make sure that um, I'm getting that glass-like resin finish. I'm very happy with the design. They're uh, close up. They're really very beautiful, and I definitely will show you uh, some close ups. And I have another video, um, you know, when, res when resin is in its liquid state and for the next sort of 8 to 12 hours it remains semi-sticky, if you leave it to uh, cure in the open, any dust, hair or any particles in the, uh, in the room may very well adhere to your painting. So I like a really beautiful finish and uh, so I've created a video to show you what I um, kind of created myself because there's really nothing on the market that um, specifically for, you know, putting your paintings in while they cure to protect them. So I created a frame um, very cheaply that um, I put over the top of my paintings while they're curing. And what you can see me doing right now is uh, I'm just folding back the newspaper so that I'm creating kind of a, a clean um, barrier around my paintings as much as possible so that when I do apply the frame over the paintings, the frame itself doesn't adhere to any of the paper. And I lay that frame down. And as I said, I created a video of how to protect your resin art from uh, dust and hair, etc. So please do check that on my YouTube channel. Um, I have quite a few videos, but that is one of them. And now you can see I've got a flashlight. I'm kind of a bit OCD. And uh, so I go back over with my flashlight and just look for any, usually I'm looking for air bubbles at this stage, um, any signs that an air bubble is gonna, um, gonna be created. So that's the end of the video and I'm gonna bring you in for some close-ups. As you can see that shimmery silver there, that's the uh, spray paint. There's the teal golden fluid acrylic alongside the uh, ink and the mica powder. There's some hints of white there in the water because uh, it is an ocean piece. Coming over to the other one, um, same color palette, little bit different because it's on a white base. I typically do these, prepare these paintings on a somewhat navy coloured base with maybe a little bit of white. But you can see that shimmery silver spray paint, metallic spray paint. And I'm trying to manoeuvre my um, camera to show you 
give you some good sort of insight into the piece, but at the same time I'm struggling with the light. And as I said, I'm going to post some photos at the end of the video of the some close-up shots. Little jellyfishes kind of look in there. Um, those I created with the alcohol. There's a little jellyfish there, that's droplets of alcohol. And there's a little bit of technique attached to doing those. Um, as you get used to using the products, you know, you kind of work out what gives you those kind of results. So here's some close-ups. So it definitely has a watery feel. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, check out the finished pieces, uh, photographs of the finished pieces on uh, Facebook. Links will be in the description. Bye.